Today we'll start a quick three-part series going over my splitter side skirts and diffuser and give you a little guide on how to make your own. For those of you who watch my Illumilite video, you know that I made all three pieces out of one single four foot by eight foot section of Illumilite. If you do not plan on making the other two pieces, you can get away with a three foot by six foot sheet, but just go ahead and buy the four foot by eight foot sheet. You'll have a lot more material if you ever decide to add the other pieces later. I'm going to include a diagram on how to get all four pieces out of a one sheet of Illumilite. I'm also going to provide some ballpark measurements on what size I'm running for my car. It'll be different for different cars and different classes and what your intended use is. For mine, my splitter is 72 inches wide and 32 inches deep. From the rear of the fascia to the front tip, it's 18 inches, and then it goes 14 inches past that where it connects to the front subframe. There are two other connections that are directly under each headlight that go down to that little corner. You have two turnbuckles on the front that allow me to slightly adjust the angle of the front of the splitter and then I have two connections that are directly under the radiator it's four inch long bolts that go through it and up into the core support so here's a rough sketch of my splitter the rear section is 14 inches deep and 40 inches wide but narrows down to 22 inches those two dots are where it mounts to the front subframe you have the six different locations on the front portion of the splitter that mounts to the car those two middle ones are a front core support the two outer ones are also the front core support and the very two in the front are the turnbuckles that mount to the front frame rail the depth of the whole splitter is 32 inches. The front section is 18 inches deep. And those little end areas are 5 inches deep. The whole width is 72 inches wide. And unless you're running super wide wheels, you should have no issue with, with the rear section rubbing. And then here is how you're going to get all four pieces onto one piece of 4 foot by 8 foot Illumilite. You've got the splitter will fit in that large rectangle on the bottom right. You have the two side skirts and the diffuser is whatever is left over on top. As you saw from the shape of the splitter, you're not going to be using this entire rectangle so you should be able to get the six fins out of whatever scraps are left over from the splitter. So a total of eight very solid attachments. I also have two little spats in front of the front wheels because when you're looking at the front of a car you do not want to see any of the tread of the tire. You want it all covered so air goes around the car or over the car. I did have enough left over to do three different size end plates depending on what size track I'm running. If it's a really short track I can run the tall ones. If it's a high speed track like Roebling Road I'm going to run the small ones or maybe no end plates at all. The front air dam is a four inch tall piece of ABS plastic. There is a piece of aluminum angle that goes all the way behind it on the bottom that is bolted to the splitter and then riveted to the air dam then I have screws running all the way across to tightly connect it to the front fascia the turnbuckles are intended for wire fencing so if you've got decorative wire fencings on your back porch or if you've seen it at some sort of public space these are the turnbuckles that are going to be on the end of each of those wires to make sure everything is nice and tight. The nice thing about them is they have a quick disconnect to the bottom. I just pull a little pin out and I can disconnect the turnbuckle. The top of the wire is attached to an eye bolt on the front frame rail and the bottom is attached to an eye bolt that is bolted to the front splitter. I haven't had any issues with this splitter even to speeds up to 140 miles an hour. I can stand on it without issue and this splitter if it's generating 200 pounds of downforce I would be thrilled. So for me to be able to stand with 180 pounds of weight on one single spot i'm not worried about it going anywhere the only issue is pulling out of parking lots or driveways that's the main problem it just sticks out so far in front of a car but sometimes there's just not enough angle for me to exit without scraping at least four inches of splitter sticking out of the fascia all the way around some places are a little bit deeper depending on the contour of the car for those of you who know the 350z you'll know the left and right hand sides are lower than the middle section so the air dam makes it nice one smooth surface all the way across. It's four inches tall and the reason it's that height is the rear mounts of the splitter which don't have a front subframe are at this height so everything else was based off of that height it also gave this splitter about two to two and a half inches of ground clearance depending on which wheels and tires i'm running which you want the splitter to be under three inches for it to be effective if you want to generate downforce underneath your splitter it's going to need to be under three inches of ground clearance otherwise you'll just be generating downforce by pressure pressing down on top of the splitter 
you won't have both effects working together. Now, having a multi-dimensional splitter following the contour of a 350Z's front bumper is not a bad thing. That's what Ferrari does on its IMSA cars. The left and right hand sides are a little bit lower than the center section. And what that is there for is if the car gets leaned forward and there's too little ground clearance, the splitter is going to stop working. So having that center section a little higher will still help generate downforce to keep the front of your car on the ground. The problem is it's just a lot more complicated to make and not really something that's feasible to do out of a Luma light. But the Luma light has held up extremely well. I haven't had any problems with deflection or peeling or any problems with the weather and even scraping. It holds up the scraping way better than my other two splitters did. So overall, I would definitely recommend it as a splitter material. It's relatively cheap, it holds up well, and it's really light and it's really strong. In the next video, we'll be going over the side skirts, and in video three, we'll be going over the diffuser. So drop some comments below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.